Hey, it's Andrew Huang. The studio is a disaster right now. I've got piles of stuff everywhere. I've been recording some pedal steel over here. I've been scoring a new science show over here. This giant thing arrived recently. Haven't even got the plastic off yet. We'll look at that in another video. But today, let's ignore all my ongoing projects and start a new one. I was at a used instrument store recently and found something really cool that you've probably seen before in the thumbnail of this video. <laughs> So I did the tiniest amount of research and this is called a Taishokoto or a Nagoya harp. It's a stringed instrument from Japan. It's got five strings and all of them are tuned to G. This one here just acts as a drone. It's the uh, lower octave. And then these other four, there's an identical lower octave and then the higher octave. And then there are 27 keys with black and white notes like a piano and each one when you press it lowers this sort of pad onto the strings. All the strings other than the drone string. The keys are also numbered because, you know, it's helpful to see when you're playing a two sharp. It's also got a pickup, so let's plug it in, see what it sounds like, make some music. <laughs> very satisfying to punch these keys. They're really chunky. They're like typewriter keys in the best way. Dear loser, Chris. That's a very old internet reference for you. And yet not old enough that it makes sense to be typing on a typewriter. It's kind of cool though to play it like this. Of course, the highest note is gonna get the priority because it's gonna fret the string. Fret the string? Like, what's the word for that? Pinch the string. <laughs> Just play it like a piano. So we've been listening to a completely clean signal. I think it's time to put the Taishikoto through some pedals. So I warmed it up with the analog drive and then put a bunch of beautiful reverb and delay on it with the Empress Echo system. Then I recorded a second layer with the Digitech Whammy uh, pitch shifting it an octave up. I also put a little bit of tape on the drone string because I didn't want that sympathetically vibrating. I just wanted the notes that I was typing. Let's add some drums. A uh, quick sponsored message. Today's video is sponsored by XLN Audio. You might know them. Uh, they made the RC20 plugin that pretty much every lo-fi producer uses, but they just released XO. I was part of the beta for this and uh, check it out. It organizes your drum sounds with artificial intelligence. So every little dot on this map is a drum sample and it comes with thousands, but I've also added in thousands from my own sample library. It's actually so fun to just drag the cursor around but you'll notice that similar sounds are grouped together. So if I explore one little area, you can hear that all the samples there share a lot of sonic characteristics. And if I move around, those samples share different sonic characteristics. So there's a bunch of short thumpy kicks. Over here, they're more resonant and hollow. So it's just an easier way to browse drum samples because you can just zip around and find the samples you want and add them to your kit as opposed to trying to remember what folders you put different packs in and then packs are not always very consistent. And then, you know, you're just scrolling through things basically alphabetically. So this artificially intelligent sample browsing is kind of the main problem that EXO solves, but it also offers a lot of help with beat making. So it syncs to your DAW and it's got tons of different drum kit as well as preset patterns for you to mess with. So let's play this along with the Taisha Koto. I'll just scroll through a bunch of presets at random. So there's a whole bunch of moods here that we could go with. I'm kind of torn actually, because I was picturing when I recorded the Taisho Koto, something like this. But then I also really like this blip doom preset. That's a little more unexpected to me. Let's, let's play with that a bit. So I'm gonna go to the edit page. Let's just hear these drums on their own. I don't really care for this sample. So I'm gonna remove it here. 
I'm gonna go to the sample combiner now and lock the kick because I think I wanna keep that sound, but I'm gonna switch out the snare. And all these dots beside it are the similar sounding ones that XO has picked out. I like that one. When you've got some good drums going, you can export the loop as a WAV file or you can just drag the MIDI to your DAW. And now, turning off the XO playback. It acts just like a drum sampler and then you can go in and make any of your MIDI edits and treat it like you normally would on your timeline. Okay, let's keep developing this track.